and Magistrate Judge Whalen. Will the attorneys please identify themselves for the record? Gregory Gibbs on behalf of the plaintiff, Thomas Hansen. May it please the court, Robert Chang on behalf of Mayor Williamson. I will also like to state for the record that due to difficulties not germane to these proceedings, uh, the city attorney will not be appearing, but that uh, for these proceedings I will be uh, representing the city as well as the mayor in terms of placing objections on the record. Would you swear the witness, please? Good morning. Good morning. Do you swear the testimony about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall be had? I do. This is all, record should also reflect that this is a continuation of the deposition that began approximately two weeks ago. Yeah, I think on July 15th, we began. Uh, can I have this marked as Exhibit 4? Ready, Mayor? I'm ready, yes. Okay. Uh, Mayor Williamson, I've handed you what we've had marked as Exhibit 4, which is a one page document with the title Executive Order Number 04 0007 with a date of July 7, 2004 at the top. Uh, there's a signature at the bottom above the typewritten name of Donald J. Williamson, Mayor. Is that your signature? Mayor? I believe it is. Okay. Are you familiar with this order, Mayor? You know, as I read it, you know, I recollect this here, yes. Okay. And, and you, that's your signature at the bottom. Would you have read it after you signed or before you signed it? Chances are I did. I'm not sure of that. Okay. And uh, let me ask you this. Do you remember whose idea uh, it was to issue an order of this nature? Yes, I do. And whose idea was it? It was mine. Okay. And just for the record, uh, I guess the actual title of this is Establishment of City Policy Regarding the Storage and Reading of Newspapers, Magazines, and Other Reading Materials by City Employees. Is that an accurate statement of the it, it, title? Pretty much so, yes. And uh, it was your, your idea, um, why, did, why did you decide that an order like this was necessary? Well, because as I uh, traveled this city when I took over, I seen a lot of people were not really doing their job, but were reading papers and so forth, or whatever it might be. And I never thought that that would be the correct thing to do, is read magazines and so forth on city time where the taxpayers were paying them. Okay. Now, uh, so this is after you became mayor that you observed this? That's correct. Okay. Um, in, after you became mayor, did you become, uh, well, before I get into that, did, did be, was there more than one draft of this order? You mean rough drafts? Yeah. I don't know that. Okay. When uh, you had this order issued, how did you go about doing that? Now, I don't know how I did that. But in a normal circumstance, I would have my secretary do it. Okay. And was your secretary at the time uh, K. Muhammad? I don't know that. Oh, okay. What, did you ever have a secretary by the name of K. Muhammad? Mm-hmm. Okay. I did, yes. Just for clarification, are you talking about promulgation of this executive order or who typed it up? Well, I'm uh, trying to find out how it came to be. So one would be, did K. Muhammad type it? You know, you're not sure. I don't know who did that. Uh, did you discuss uh, the language of this order with anyone before it was typed up? I don't recall that. Okay. Uh, is it possible that you did and you just don't recall? Anything is possible, I don't recall. Okay. Do you know if there was more than one draft of this order prepared before the final order was issued? No, I do not. Okay. 
So would it be your position that, you know, reading newspapers on, uh, during work time or, or dealing with the media at all during work time is kind of disruptive to work, right? It would not be in the best interest of the taxpayers of the city of Flint who pays these employees to have employees reading any type of material. Okay. Ian, are you familiar with the uh, personnel rules that apply to city employees? Well, I could be. Okay. Well, it would be fair to say that there are personnel rules uh, issued by the city of Flint that tell employees that they're not to uh, do uh, things that are not related to their work while they're on the clock? I'm not aware of that. Did you try to check that out before you issued an order like this? Well, it doesn't make any difference. Under the charter, I have the authority. I can make my own rules. Okay. So, as far as you're concerned, it wouldn't matter? Well, no. I, uh, what I do is when I ran for mayor, I decide to turn this city around and put it in the right direction. And I'm doing what's the best for the taxpayers of this city. Okay. And, and the question I have is, was there any personnel rule that allowed employees to read non-work-related material while they were on the job? I don't know. Okay. Well, were you aware of any arbitration decisions that said, if you could, let me complete my question, that said uh, it was okay for a city employee to read non-work-related material on the job? I have no knowledge of any such arbitration ruling. Okay. I have no knowledge of any ruling that would allow them to do that. When you went around the city and you saw a city employee during work hours reading a newspaper, did you cite them and reprimand them? No. Why not? Well, because first of all, I passed an ordinance or executive order, and the order speaks for itself. Okay, but you said that before you <laughs> issued this order, you saw this problem occurring, and That's you issued the order. Right. When you saw the problem occurring, did you have that em uh, the employee that was not working and reading a newspaper. Did you have him reprimanded or, or no. fired? When I, when I took and become mayor of the city of Flint, I, the first thing I do is go around through here, all the different departments, and not all of them, but many of them, and I find out what the problem is. And then I find out the solution. Then I put the solution in to correct the problem. Okay. Did you try to find out whether there were rules on the books that said, you know, hey, if an employee's not working, they can be fired? Well, first of all, I did what's the best interest of the taxpayers of this city. Okay. My question was, did you investigate whether or not there were personnel rules on the books that no, you could No, because it wouldn't make any difference, because I have the authority to make new rules okay. under the charter. Okay. So you didn't care what the rules were? What I said to you, let's make it real clear, I did what's in the best interest of the citizens of Flint, and it surely is not people reading magazines and literature and so forth on company time. It, their best interest is to take care of the citizens in the city of Flint. But, Mayor, weren't there rules on the books that you were aware yes, of that would allow you to take care of those employees? Answered. He's already answered that twice, I believe. This is the third time you've asked the question. Not to my knowledge. Okay. Now, 